Okay, on to taping. So why do we tape an area before we paint? Well, it's to keep the paint on the right surfaces. Taping is one of the most foundational tasks of painting. So let's talk about a few tips for taping. Width. Tape is made in a range of sizes, generally three quarters of an inch to three inches. Colors are used for easy identification. Blue tape is often called painter's tape. White tape is utility masking tape. After that, colors can vary between manufacturers. What's the difference? Well, two things, adhesive and release. Release is how long you can leave tape in place without the adhesive transferring to the substrate. Three days, seven days, etc. White tape has a more aggressive adhesive with a shorter three-day release. This means if you leave it baking in the sun for three weeks, there will be a real mess to clean up. Blue tape has a less aggressive adhesive and a 14-day release. Adhesion is how much the tape sticks. Stronger adhesive means it sticks more. More is not always better. Too much adhesion can pull off paint. Of course, a very light adhesive won't stick well to concrete block. Paper type. Thicker paper is generally matched with heavier or stronger adhesive. Thinner paper is generally matched with lighter adhesive for delicate surfaces like laying out stripes on a wall. Good quality paper means easier removal with less slivering, so you can remove tape in one long, clean pull. In addition to white masking tape and blue painter's tape, there is edge sealing tape with special adhesive that prevents paint from leaking under the edge and gives razor sharp lines. There's duct tape, you know what that is. There is masonry tape, it's heavy duty and sticks like crazy and lots of others. Tape selection is really important. If tape doesn't perform well, it actually costs time and money because it's difficult to remove, and if it doesn't hold well, there's a lot more touch-up to do when you pull it off. You'll use tape in a lot of different ways. Holding down floor protection, taping plastic to foundations, covering windows, laying out stripes on walls, etc. Here's some taping advice. Before you put it on, think about how it will come off. You want it to come off in one long, easy pull. So, let's see how this is done in the field. To the field! Ah, taping. So much time and money is thrown away when people don't tape. Taping keeps paint on the right surfaces and makes edges look clean and straight. It takes time to tape, but it is always worth it. You'll find yourself taping trim, baseboards, doors, windows, all the edges of anywhere that one paint stops and another begins. It may seem like taping is a pretty self-evident process, but there's a method that needs to be followed to get the right results. Okay, Shane, so how do you tell new employees at your company how to tape? Like, what are some of the specific ways to do that that you guys show people? Well, um, we, we teach them the basics of, of why we tape first, which is, first of all, to create really straight lines uh, and really sharp, clean lines and corners where the walls meet the woodwork. Second, we do it to eliminate splatter onto the baseboard from when we roll the walls. So what's the difference between a good tape job and a great tape job? A couple of the subtle nuances that we have when we're taping are, one, we back the tape line back away from the corner about a sixteenth of an inch. That gives us a visual of a straight line so that we can see exactly where our, our paint line is going to lay. And the second reason we do that is oftentimes when you're dealing with repaint situations, you have wall paint that's been brought too far down onto the baseboard or trim paint that's been brought too far up onto the wall. So sometimes we have to back our tape line off onto the edge of the baseboard a little bit so that our wall paint can come down and completely cover the old wall paint. So you're trying to achieve that straight line, but sometimes the walls are wavy. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes the walls are wavy. So what we find is important to do is make sure that you're taping to the back edge of the baseboard and not trying to follow along the waves of the mm. wall. So we bring it back to the back edge of the baseboard so we have a solid surface to tape to so the paint doesn't seep underneath the tape. And that also gives us a reference for a straight line. When taping complex trim, your 5-in-1 or putty knife will help make sure the tape adheres to all the intricate crevices. 
Bet you didn't think you'd ever be taping carpet, but it's often necessary, especially on stairs. Trade best practices. Taping. Set the edge of the tape to ensure good contact with the substrate. A finger is okay, a fingernail is better. But best practice is to use a putty knife or 5-in-1 tool. Rather than scratching to lift a tape edge, it can help to fold the end back on itself and leave a pull tab for easy removal. Types of tape. Blue Painter's tape has a 14-day release, so adhesive residue doesn't transfer to the substrate. White Utility Tape has more adhesion than Painter's tape, but only has a 3-day release, so don't let this bake in the sun for a week. Specialty tape is job-specific. For example, Delicate Surface Tape is made of very thin rice paper and has lower adhesion. It's great for painting stripes, but Heavy Duty Plastic Tape is great for exterior concrete or stucco. Crepe. Crepe is the crinkles in the tape paper. It allows the tape to stretch a bit and conform to irregularities in the surface and gives better contact with the substrate. Tape bleed. Here we have three different examples of tape bleed. When removing hand-pressed tape, there is a better chance that paint can bleed under the tape. Best practice is to set the tape edge with a putty knife. This will improve tape coverage and reduce tape bleed. Edge sealing tape has a special adhesive that seals and blocks paint bleeding. This technology gives super sharp edges. I got started painting actually when I was uh, just out of the military. I had a lot of experience with attention to detail, so obviously in painting there is a lot of that that I can relate to and I just kind of picked up on it like that. When I first started obviously I was just a painter and you know I've worked my way from there just by proving myself and doing good work. I've worked for several other painting companies and with Garrett Painting they do it right. You do it right the first time. Next up, masking. Paint, ah, taping, oh my god. Tape, oh, I keep wanting to say painting. It's just one sentence. Isn't there supposed to be a door around here somewhere? 